Hi, I'm Jenny Murphy, and it's time to get up close and personal with Louise Quinn. How are you getting on, Lee? Hi, Jen. How's it going? Or Fuzz. Oh, you're known for me as Fuzz now. Jen is, Jen is far too formal. Great. Well, got some pretty tough questions <laughs> prepped for you. Okay, I've known you a long time, so this isn't going to be awkward at all. No, no. For, you, for you anybody know, else. Yeah. You know the anyone else listening in, how do you want to give backstory? How we became friends? All yeah. That yeah, how long we've been friends for, yeah, more than half of our lives at this stage, haven't we? We were like 14, 15, 16. Initially and hated each other. Hated each other. Yes, a uh the first like time it was more about hatred and competitiveness and yeah basically wanting to be better than each other and probably almost jealous of each other's talents but then mm. it blossomed it blossomed yeah. then and, but yeah it started it started in like school football I was in a I was in Newbridge College as you are the posh one <laughs> you were yeah you were in oh, what, it, like cross and passion cross and yeah. passion there we go yeah but literally we were just playing school football against each other weren't we and yeah your school always Kilcullen always absolutely just spanked us but I think we always just had this like inner competitiveness against each other and I remember that was it you're in you're in school with like Steph and then she played for Piemont and then brought you along to Piemont one day and literally it was just like you arrived and I was like what is she doing here what is she doing here? Who invited her? <laughs> What's going on? <laughs> but yeah, but then literally but it was just... Impossible. We realised that we weren't actually complete... No. ...assholes, so... No, 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 we actually, yeah, we... we Success. Yeah, we don't have a lot in common, but we, we still liked each other, though, you know. Yeah, I think bonded over the fact that, like, um, I think we were on a trip to Wales and still was, like not sure about it and then I saw I how be listening or watching this so don't get into oh yeah well you the amount of pizza then that you ate yeah um it was impressive so yeah we'll move swiftly along and it just ends this thing apologies um okay so I've got to ask some tough questions these are my brief okay so we'll start off kind of easy your favorite win um or memory that comes to mind so your favorite win a game any particular one that you're like that was a gem favorite win I suppose literally one of the most recent ones um was actually then with Fiorentina and so we had gotten through the first stage of Champions League uh and then we were into the next round played Prague at home drew 2-2 then we went to Prague like the next week or the week after and literally the game you know what the game was was quite bad uh, <laughs> you know really we were just like missing chances it was all very middle of the pitch you know I was I was still I was enjoying it though you know things things were going well and but then literally it got to the last I think there was like six minutes at the time I don't know why and we got to the fifth minute and we just got a free kick randomly outside the box and yeah and one of our yeah smallest players like 35 years old this time it's like so Daniela Sabatino right Clap, like just Italian through and through and yeah and she just got her head on the end of the ball and knocked it into the bottom corner and just celebrating that goal was just one of like I'd, I'd been through I felt like a bit of a that football had been mean to me you know what I mean things weren't going well like some things with the Irish team a few weeks earlier, I'd gotten a red card because the Italians like to go down like a sack of spuds. So, you know, I was just like, oh, this is, you know, this is tough. But then this moment happened and we had that win to get through then to the next round of the Champions League. And that, like that buzz and that feeling just like came rushing over me again and just the celebrations. You know, you can imagine then the Italians celebrating like crazy and just... It was, yeah, it was just, you know, incredible, incredible. So that's your gem. And then I'm going to go, like, I know you've had, like, plenty of great wins and stuff as well, but what's the one that hurts the most? Oh, yeah. No, we, yeah. Again, 
very recently, yeah, it's got to be, you know, the Irish team against Ukraine um, in the UEFA qualifiers. And yeah, we could have we could have gone on and, and got ourselves a playoff spot. But yeah, unfortunately, we just couldn't. Yeah, we couldn't we couldn't finish our dinner that day. We co- couldn't put the goals away. And yeah, just really unfortunate and it hurts. But yeah, you, like you've got to you've got to grow from it. You've got to move on from it. You know, the next plan is then obviously to qualify for a World Cup. So yeah, these these things happen. But um, and it hurt a lot. And I think yeah, even because of like. COVID and stuff, you felt like you couldn't even like console each other. You know, that was like the atmosphere at that time. So yeah, it was just a really weird and tough moment. Yeah. Are you finding like, especially being away from home and like you're facing foreign side at the moment, that when the losses happen, they somehow suck even more. And when you're winning, there may be that extra little bit sweeter because like all you've got to look forward to is maybe an extra walk or a bit of extra fettuccine afterwards like I don't know yeah literally yeah we celebrate we celebrate with with a pizza every you know pretty much every game um the staff always enjoy enjoy their their wine the night before a game and I'm like don't you know don't rub this in our face when you're you know enjoying this delicious delicious food is pineapple like verboten in oh that face even oh yeah oh Oh, don't don't mess with their food. I've been given out to so many times. Like I've heard a lot of curse words towards me in Italian if I've like mixed mixed plates. So don't you know when you're when people are making their pasta the night before a game and throw a bit of veg in and a bit of chicken. No, 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 Louise. You don't do that. You do not mix other foods. Pasta is perfect the way it is. Do not change anything or add anything. So if you try like. Very up. I can't even drink a cappuccino after eleven o'clock, apparently. So then, like, I go in and I I go into a cafe and I'd order an Italian and then, you know, or I'd say something, we'd say hello and it would all be in Italian, it'd be lovely, and I'd be like, in Italian, I'd ask for a cappuccino. And they're like, okay, do you want that to take away? And I'm like, oh, we were speaking so good Italian, but then they knew I was a foreigner as soon as I ordered a cappuccino. It's just mm-hmm. forbidden. They laughed at me the first time I ordered a cappuccino at like one o'clock in the day. So, oh, that's that's yeah. that's appropriate. Got it. Um. Okay. Like this. So I've got some other some other gems here, right? Mm. So, like this part of the year, like for you anyway, it's it can it can be super stressful with like contracts and kind of stuff coming up as well. For me, as and for most athletes that play any level or whatever, thoughts of like transfers and signing and getting moved different countries it's really foreign to them like what is that like yeah it, it's such a it is such a like a strange one it is like you're trying to like you know kind of yeah you kind of you kind of feel like a like a piece of meat you know what I mean like and you're either then you know the prime the prime Phyllis or you're the you know or you're just like a little side cut or the or the the trotters or the or the snaws or something you know you're just like you're just the little side pieces you know and I want to be prime Phyllis buzz I want to be prime Phyllis fair enough that's the analogy you're going for yeah no I do (laughs) it is like it's yeah it kind of does like when it comes to this stage like this is a really tough stage if you haven't signed on an extra year and yeah, you know, you're like you're either looking to to stay on at your club and hope that you've done well enough, or yeah, or put yourself on the market and you know and be walked around, walked around that 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 stall, that cattle mart. <laughs> we'll just we'll, we'll have to stay with that. Like that's where you want to go, man. Um, we might touch back on that later, but I want I still like there's some things that like I kind of like know a little bit, but I think it's interesting. So, in terms of players that you is there certain players that have impacted you the most? Like that you're like, they've made a really, po- they've really influenced you in a positive way in your career with just how you go about your business. Uh, yeah. So yeah, there would definitely be. So my friend, uh, Annika or there that she was in, in Sweden. So she was just like the, the ultimate professional she was 
she was the one who like got me in shape. She gave me a training program. She gave me an eating program. She, she kind of basically taught me how to kind of be a professional and she was just my teammate. Um, and then thankfully she was, so she was also a physio. So any little things that were going on, sometimes you just, you like, you know, go in, get her to, get her to get the hammies a little rub or just do whatever, you know, off you know, off, uh, off business. But she, she literally was just like, kind of like, yeah, like your, your mother, your sister and your best friend, like wrapped into one. And she was just, and she was just a, a demon on the pitch as well. Like she actually, she actually wanted to apply for like gladiator in Sweden at one stage. Like she was, I don't know what her like nickname would be in it, but yeah, no, she was just like the prime professional really like taught me so many things. And then yeah, and then playing with like Kim Little in in Arsenal again. She's like, you know, very very quiet. But then when it comes on the pitch, she is like this like red mist comes over, and she's just like, she she defends for the team. She attacks. She scores goals. Maybe things aren't going right. Just give her the ball. She'll make something happen. Um, yeah, and then yeah, and then, and then I'll give I'll give you your uh, your little shout out as well. Like you. You've been through some of the tough times as well. You've had, yeah, you've had a few, couple of injuries that like, you know, have really affected you and affected, you know, your career and all that. But I kind of, I think when you came back, first of all, from like your, your long-term back injury and then, yeah, you did the ACL, but just how you've been able to overcome that and, you know, also kind of get on with life and, and do do everything. That is just like, that special and it shows like yeah maybe if I am having a, a bit of a crap time like not understanding Swedish or Italian or you know feeling annoyed or that I had a bad game you know at least then you know I would I would call you straight away and you'd be in your knee brace and you just could be the best advice ever and then yeah you know so those those little moments yeah and the wisdom the, I think the, I think the, the wisdom was shared not just like you know deep stuff but also I now I'm able to curse quite well not only in Italian, mm. but Swedish. So, you, yeah, really. Who knows what's next? I've taught you so much. I know, mm. I know. Um, like, I don't know what, like, so I know, like, you're kind of touching on um, the kind of tough times and stuff and you're having a bad day, but is there, like, an overall, like, something that maybe, like, people aren't aware of just in terms of professional sports or sports, what do you think is the toughest part of the game? um yeah the toughest part of the game yeah listen there there is is that I like I mean such a privileged position as it is like to to still be playing to have gotten to have played pretty much so yeah the start of lockdown everything was shut down um but then from then on we've been you know lucky to have be, you know get tested all the time still be able to go out and do our job um you know and and then now at the moment, yeah, to kind of do it in, in Florence in, in Italy is, is amazing. But yeah, I think it is just kind of, you really have to, yeah, step outside your comfort zone and always kind of like, yeah, fly, you know, fly the nest. You've always got to leave, you know, the people that you want to be around sometimes the most. And um, like, I think that's it. Like kind of, it, it's, there's so much sacrifice all the time, but I think it is always, yeah, that you have to, the word is the word is always sacrifice I feel like you um you know are missing are missing these special occasions and you know birthdays and you know all the all the good times bad times wanting to be there for the family like you know during COVID as they're doing their like 26th jigsaw puzzle and you know you want to be there to help them do the jigsaw puzzle but it's yeah I think just some of those and it's it just makes you know being away um, really tough but then and obviously now during COVID you know I haven't had any visitors in Italy which is just you know insane but so then I just kind of make sure I try all the food so when someone does visit and try the wines so when someone does visit fuzz when you visit if you can ever visit um, I feel like every time I video call you there's a, like a nice background and there's some kind of different pastry that I've never seen before. Mm. And you're like, I don't know what this is. I no. don't know the name of it, but it's pretty good. No, delicious. Yeah. Delicious. Filet um, mignon. Filet mignon. Filet mignon? Svoliatelli? No? Steak, whatever. Something delicious. I don't oh, know. oh, okay. Steak. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. 
yeah, prime. Back, all back that kind of stuff. Yeah. 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 Um, like in terms of other like insights or gems, is there any? Oh, actually, this like I'm I'm really hoping that the answer to this is what I'm thinking. But what's your funniest memory on the pitch? Do you have like one that you're like, that's gas. <laughs> Funniest. <laughs> or one that you look back and you're like, it still gets a laugh. <laughs> Funniest memory on the pitch. Oh. Oh. Um, oh, tough one. The oh, oh yeah, yeah. You know this one. <laughs> <laughs> if I'm really hoping this is yeah. So yes, when I played in Sweden. Um, yeah. in in the league at the time there uh, yeah there was basically the best player in the world uh, Marta so you know the Brazilian that just untouchable and like literally has won Champions League has just you know her status she like she is the Brazilian number 10 on her jersey just Marta just a single name don't, I actually don't even know if she has a second name she's just Marta you know and yeah, we were playing them and it was like, yeah, like my second season and uh, she was just running rings around us. And then it was towards the end of the game, we were like losing like 2-0 or whatever. And then, yeah, I took her down to the edge of the box because I was sick of her just running rings around us. And and I was probably also just really tired and probably didn't even mean it. But yeah, but then in Swedish, she said to me, and obviously I didn't have a clue at the time, she started like kind of screaming at me or like just yelling at me. But basically then the girls like afterwards, after it happened, they were like, Lou, like, do you know what she said to you? And I was like, like not a clue. She was ang like angry though. But basically Marta, the best player in the world, just called me a tall loser. And it's just, it still oh, cracks me up. It's so good. Tall loser. Oh. Like, yeah, no, the tall, like I guess technically she was correct. I am tall and we were losing the game. So I just hope she didn't mean to be as personal as she was, you know, maybe. Mm. It was just you are a tall person who is losing a game, you know. That's that's what I take it as. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what I was thinking of. I'm really glad that you touched on that. Um, yeah, no, no problem. I, I know we've got like. Go on. No, I was just I was like like to be honest, that was my main agenda for this interview was to make sure that people know about your tall loser story mm. okay and now it's time for me to turn the tables on you jenny so tell me jennifer what is so you you have played many sports you've played ga you've played football soccer and you've obviously played rugby can you can you think of like you know what were some of your what did you what were some of your toughest moments then on the you know on the soccer pitch or can you remember like a specific game or moment that yeah, you know, it was, it was, it resonated hard with you. Um, you know, talk to me. Okay. I feel like this is a, like a trick question. Yeah, if you don't uh, get the answer, yeah. I'll answer it for you, basically. Uh, uh, oh, it's been a while ago since I played football. Um, mm. oh, I, can, I can't remember what year it was, but I, I think we lost to St. Francis in like a semi-final or a final or something with teammates. And I remember that sucked. I also don't this, think I had the best the, game in the world. Yeah, this is the wrong answer. All right. So I think one of your toughest moments um, when playing for Pmate was, do you remember the, I think, was it the semi-final against Mayo? And we had to travel to Mayo? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I remember that, yeah. And so we were leading up to that game. And so... Eileen Gleason was the manager of Pimane, so I love, and we had, you'd always been playing Ga, but I just kind of started playing just, you know, just for fun, but we had the semi-final coming up, so I was like, please, you know, and we had a game, that's it. so the, yeah, there was a Ga match on the Saturday, and we were going to play on the Sunday, so she was like, please don't play the game, girls, please don't play the game, we've got a really important game, and you were like, yeah, yeah, like we we won't play the game. Like we'll both be subs or whatever. And I was like, yeah, like I've I only just started. I've done one training session. Like I am not playing the game. You know, I'm going to stand there on the side. Anyway, we got to the game. You were playing the game, and I was like, I'm nervous that Jen is playing the game. And first five minutes, you got, 
I don't know, just tackled badly, clotheslined, whatever, I don't know what happened, and dislocated your shoulder, wasn't it? I can't remember. Yeah, it was something yeah. with my shoulder. Yeah. You dislocated yeah. your shoulder, popped it out. And then, and then I had to go on the pitch then to, to replace you directly after five minutes. And I was like, Ilo's gonna kill me. Fuzzes is worth and Ilo's gonna kill me. And so basically then, like, got on with the game. I played the game, all was good. And then we had to travel down to Mayo after the game, your dad was driving us down, but you were like in a sling. And then we got to the hotel and they thought, that you were joking when your arm was in the sling and you're like, no, Eileen, like, I'm sorry. I have done something to my shoulder. Ilo was maybe still not taking your shit. And so you played the game the next day. And like, you were like playing and like rolling around with your shoulder beside you and like retching. I literally, you'd, I'd have to go over to you every now and then. You'd, I'd be like, Jen, how are you? You're like, yeah, yeah, I'm okay. I think I blocked that out because I remember how 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 mad Isla was. So oh, yeah, man. Eileen Leeson is now the assistant manager. Of assistant the, manager the, so I'm just so surprised yeah. I haven't got your call up. I'm really yeah. I'm really, am really in no way surprised at all. I think yeah, football was not my forte. But thanks for bringing that back. Uh, thank you. That was it was just, just the, the game memorable. So, we won the yeah. game we the first half with the dislocated shoulder. Um, yeah. We were all very, very proud of you, but um, it, was also, it was also disgusting that I thought you were going to vomit in the middle of the pitch like four times. Right. Thanks. Sweet. What hair products do you use to keep the fuzz? The trick is um, to invest in a good conditioner, yeah. but also to not use a conditioner constantly or it just builds up. Mm-hmm. Um, so um, I don't know the exact brand, but it's never go for yeah, wooden curls right. oh, just, oh. just avoid a, a curl specialist because it just it tightens up too much you don't need that so yeah, yeah, yeah. that's that's it that's my that's my tip okay and let's see so like on on the pitch have you ever used your hair to your advantage or has someone ever taken advantage of your hair on the rugby pitch yeah my hair has been pulled yeah, my hair is both. Uh, I, I, I got my hair was pulled when I was playing against Munster, and t- it was pulled twice. And then the third time it was pulled right at the touchline. And um, I was playing with Leinster. It got pulled. I was on the I was on the ground. There was two Munster players behind me. My hair got yanked for a third time. Mm-hmm. And instead of just like instead of just calmly like taking it I swung without looking um and hit the wrong person right in front of the touch judge and got a red card and then my dad after I got sent off luckily we still won the game but it was really embarrassing I'm like not how happy with how I reacted um oh, and I at remember Christmas that pic- I always send you that picture <laughs> oh, it's so bad they at Christmas time uh we'd go to the, our local for a little point on Christmas Eve. And then um, when I walked in the pub, my dad had arranged it to have the red cars photo in the back of the pub for when I walked in. So that was um sound of him. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So that's, that's a long, long answer. Apologies. You're, you're also quite the celeb in one of the, the local restaurants as well, isn't it? Isn't there a, isn't there a wonderful, Oh yeah, I'm beside what's your man from Dallas. Whoever was in Dallas is yeah, a picture of myself, Ailish and Nora, um, in the Valley we're in, um, with JR in in Dallas. So yeah, um, big deal around those parts. It's a very small photo, and mm. thanks for pointing that out. Yes, no problem at all. 